Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to focus on the changes between my V2 Golf putter and the version 2.2 module you're seeing in uh, on the screen right now. Uh, so first things first, let's take off the golf course. Uh, and this is the sample golf course that I have instructions for up on website, lauriegear.com. Uh, that and the instructions for the uh, the putter itself, of course. Right, so let's put that to one side. Uh, I've already removed the motor, as we see here, and it just allows me to turn the mechanism. I'm also just going to pop the top off briefly uh, so that we can better see inside the top. Um, so one of the uh, one of the first key changes to version 2.2 um, is I had, for various reasons, I'd got my piston transfer heights wrong. Uh, so for a better example of that, let's get these plates up here. Um, so what I had um, between the final two pistons was a place where I had a section where two, uh, basically there was a, a flat spot of uh, two, two studs. Uh, and what that meant was that the ball all, wouldn't always transfer between uh, the main piston and the next piston. And we can kind of see in this example here, if we don't, is that when we anywhere we have a tile or a plate of two sets wide, the ball has an opportunity not to roll. Um, whereas if we have this example here, it's or it's only one plate wide, the ball will always roll. Um, so uh, the change there involved actually lifting these two main pistons are now a plate taller, uh, and it also means these uh, these divider bricks are also a plate taller, and and down the bottom is also a plate taller. Um, uh, that leads into a change to the input ramp itself. Uh, the pivot point has moved accordingly to still keep the same angle for the balls rolling in. Um, and I've also added in these snot bricks here that allow uh, the stop this from tilting up. Didn't, did, I didn't really notice this in, in, in running that it was going to tilt up, but uh, certainly when setting up the module this would kind of tend to tip and that was super annoying. So now this, this uh, won't go anywhere at all. Um, the next main kind of uh, structural change is the gearbox has been changed a little. Uh, what I found was it running it was running just a little bit slow with the existing 12 tooth to 20 tooth ratio in here. Um, and unfortunately in GBC, if your module's slow, there really is no way to speed it up without changing your gear ratios. Um, assuming you're if you're running off train controls at max speed. Uh, so I have sped it up a little now. It's now running a 16 tooth to 20 tooth. Um, and that kind of means it's running a little bit fast, but you can always slow it down a touch with a train controller, but you can never speed it up. Um, the next change is we've got these new lift arms on the side, um, and these aren't actually needed for general running of the module. What they are for is during transport, I was finding, uh, especially if it was quite rough transport, like if I was shipping it on an aeroplane or I'm driving for long hours with the module, um, parts of it would start to separate. Um, uh, and so these new lift arms hold it all together uh, quite neatly. Um, actually, one thing I didn't mention, one of the uh, the nice side effects of changing this this gear ratio in here was that uh, this there was a little assembly in the middle here, uh, and that's no longer needed. This whole this whole lot's a lot easier to build. Um, let's uh, let's have a look at the bottom now. So another change I've made is I've gone back to the thin lift arms here, uh, and the reason for that is if I I used to have connectors there, and I really wanted to use connectors to keep the count down. But connectors have this, uh, it's difficult to get the right angle, they have a little ridge on them. And what that means is that as the Conron rotated past, it would catch. Um, and it was just enough to be annoying. So I've gone back to the thin lift arms in this design, uh, and that just means that there is nothing for them to catch on anymore. Uh, the Conorons are back to being yellow. They were black in the original design. That's purely a cosmetic change. Um, but uh, black has obviously worked fine. Uh, the yellow is just a lot more visual. You've got the nice red pistons and the, and the yellow Conorons. Um, I've swapped this drive transfer axle that runs through here. This now uses a stop axle. Um, that is really only uh, important. Uh, it's kind of makes it a lot easier to take the front off and put it back on. Uh, for when I'm kind of extending the module or doing other kind of uh, work on it. So uh, let's put the putter module back on top and we'll have a look at the last couple of changes. All right, 
So um, the next change here is on the front. Uh, this used to be a continuous axle through using a connector. It now has this slip joint here, which allows the bottom to move up. Uh, the reason for that is if we run this in the normal direction, this will obviously cam uh, and move the and fire the golf putter. However, if I run it backwards, this moves up. And what would happen in the original V2 designs, because this is all a solid assembly, it would just pop this putter off right off the top, um, which is super annoying if you run the module backwards. Um, and it only you only have to do it for a couple of seconds by mistake and you would pop the tops off all your golf modules. So now it has this little slip mechanism. Uh, this band on the bottom just is just there to kind of bring it all back to, to normal. So if I run it backwards, uh, it'll just bring it back down to the right position so I can then, it will then can out correctly. Um, and the last change we're going to have a look at is actually on the backstop. Uh, let's just pop that off there. The backstop on all my golf putter designs, both V1 and V2, is removable. That's because the putters are reversible. Uh, you swap this gear from the top to the bottom, reverse the putter head, put your backsplash on the other side, and it now puts off the other direction. Um, so, uh, the original one of this was a 4x8 plate, uh, and what I found was, uh, and it didn't really stop it from working, it just meant there was an annoying clicking sound of the putter would hit the top of the studs um, uh, as it was swinging. Uh, so now that's gone, lots of clearance here, so this now swings freely. Um, so that is the, uh, the key changes from version 2 to version 2.2. Um, as I said, the most important one is these piston heights need to change a little bit. That really affects the efficiency of the module using the original V2 design, uh, and same again with the gear change. So they're the kind of key changes. Um, everything else are kind of just more usability, makes it a bit easier to run at shows, less likely to have sort of silly problems. Um, so the instructions are up on lorryge.com. Uh, that is the version 2.2 instructions. Uh, that also includes, there are a couple of extra instructions for extending it out, uh, both the two and two thirds and five brick height, uh, and also the sample golf. So that is now four separate instruction packets. Um, so you can sort of pick and choose which one you like. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, certainly check out the website if you'd like to get hold of those instructions. Um, and enjoy. Thank you.